What's going on everyone? Hope you're doing well out there today. We're going to go ahead and do another lesson on learning English with the news where we look at the news headlines from today and uh, talk about some of the phrases, some of the expressions and vocabulary there. So let's go ahead and get started with the first one here it has to do with some tech news, right? Um, it says Samsung Galaxy Samsung Galaxy, I can't even read in English. Jeez. Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus Hands On. So the name of the um, device is Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. That's a mouthful. And what they're saying is hands on. So I guess there's they're going to give you a hands on description. So we'll we'll talk about things being hands on when uh, you know you're really getting into something and you need to maybe use your hands sorry I'm gonna take these headphones off I didn't even realize I had them on anyway so hands-on is like uh, this is a hands-on project something you do with your hands is a hands-on project right you have to do it hands-on it's not something you can do from a distance or you can uh, sit back there and do it on your computer, it's hands-on, you know, you, you have to get your hands on whatever it is. So this is a good term that we use with arts and crafts or anytime you're building something like uh, this is this is a hands-on project um, in terms of building a uh, new bedroom in my house. That's a hands-on project. Okay. Got to do it hands-on, it's hands-on. Um, and then we'll look at the next phrase there, killer screen. So killer, here's an example of how killer is a uh, something that we say is like cool, right? This is killer. Um, it's not typical to talk like this anymore. I feel like it's something when I was maybe a teenager that we would say, and maybe even like my older siblings would have said when they were teenagers. So I think this is fading out a little bit. But uh, yeah, let's we'll say killer screen or this is killer, killer song, killer shoes, man. Um, it's, it's kind of like a throwback or a, a nostalgic tribute to that that time of talking. It, it reminds me of more of a 90s type of phrase, basically. Um, so this is killer. This is killer music. Did you hear that new Pearl Jam CD? It was killer. Did you hear uh, that, you know? Stone Temple Pilots song, wow, man, that's killer. Uh, it kind of is a throwback to that. I don't know if that's the actual origin, but uh, it probably was long before that. But anyway, um, I don't feel like uh, people talk like that as much anymore. So it's probably someone around my age who wrote this article. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, great sound, it says, and then messy decks. I'm not quite sure what decks is. Um, but messy means like it's sloppy, right? So whatever Dex is or D-E-X, I don't know even how you would say that. Messy is just sloppy, right? This is a mess. A mess is a dirty place, right? So um, my room is a mess right now. Um, and then I would use that as an adjective by adding a Y to it and saying it's messy to describe the room. All right, and now looking at another um, tech news headline. So Galaxy Watch 3 wants to be your go-to smartwatch for health and fashion. So when something is your go-to, it just simply means that you have that as your first decision. It's like your easiest choice or your standard choice. Yeah, standard choice is probably the best way to talk about it. Your go-to, right? So this Galaxy Watch wants to be your go-to for these um, features for health and fashion it wants to be your standard decision the standard watch that you use um, so it wants to be your go-to right so we'll say this a lot like oh this is this is my go-to meal for breakfast right or this is my go-to routine when i have downtime and i'm bored and that's my go-to is to get on instagram and look at um, posts on instagram that's my go-to it's my standard um, practice or what my standard um, behavior is. That's my go-to. All right, so looking at the next headline here, Lost Soul, South Korean middle-class dreams spoiled by soaring house prices. 
So I just want to look at the vocabulary here because it's uh, nice vocabulary, I think. Um, so we have uh, the middle class dreams are spoiled. So spoiled is like when something's rotten or ruined. It's when something's rotten or ruined. Um, so when something's spoiled, it means it's no good anymore, right? So their dreams, the middle class dreams, are spoiled. They're ruined. They're no good. Uh, so they're spoiled by house prices that are soaring. Soaring means they're going up, right? So um, originally when I think of this vocabulary, I think of a bird, right? I think we say like an eagle soars through the sky. It's like flying through the sky. It's soaring, right? Uh, so when they say house prices are soaring, they're going up. They're, they're um, increasing in altitude, so to speak. Um, so South Korean middle class dreams are getting ruined by ra rising house prices, basically is another way of saying that headline. Uh, something about this word spoiled too, it can also mean that somebody is over pampered. So you might not know that word either, um, but the best way would be to give you an example like a kid, um, a child who has parents who give him or her everything, right? They, they don't make the child work for anything. They give him everything he wants, all the new toys, money, food, whatever he wants. We would call that child spoiled. There's a phrase we use, oh, you spoiled little brat. It's like, uh, we'll say that to somebody who's acting kind of like a brood or a jerk or something like, or entitled. We'll say, oh, you spoiled little brat. So it's kind of weird because that's one where like it basically has the exact opposite meaning in another context. So something that's spoiled could be like something that's ruined or no good, um, like fruit that's spoiled, like a, a bad apple would be spoiled. We could say, oh, this apple's spoiled, I'm gonna throw it out. But uh, then when we're talking about children and kids who are spoiled, we're talking about kids who get anything they want. They're spoiled. Uh, so it could be because it's no good to treat kids like that because it could uh, lead to I don't know, um, a sense of entitlement. And maybe that's why we say they're spoiled. Uh, but yeah, in this case, it's like, oh, you're so spoiled. Or like in a relationship, husband and wife, um, they're, you know, they could say, oh, my wife spoils me. If your wife gives you a lot of gifts or something, or um, somebody could say, oh, my husband spoils me um, if he gives a lot of gifts to his significant other. Um, so that's kind of the idea. In relationships, you can be spoiled as well. It's basically somebody takes good care of you, um, but almost in an excess. So that's what getting spoiled is in that context. Okay, next one here. Josh Martinez axed from Big Brother over positive COVID-19 test. So this is referring to the reality television show Big Brother, they're saying that Josh Martinez was axed from Big Brother. So this is um, a verb, right? It means he was cut or he's taken off the show, right? Um, due to the fact that uh, he had a positive COVID-19 test. But I just want to point out, um, I just want to point out that to be axed is kind of a colloquial phrase we'll use um, when somebody's cut off or they're they're canceled or cut from a team or something, we'll say they got axed, right? If you if you got removed from a competition, you got axed. So an axe is like uh, what you use to chop wood. That's what an axe is. And here we turn it into a verb and we talk about somebody basically getting chopped off of the competition, basically, right? So you get axed. So that is what that phrase means. Um, this next one is just a quick one uh, with a phrasal verb. NYC sets up quarantine checkpoints. So to set something up, right, means to um, to put it together. I don't I don't even know how to say this uh, outside of the of a phrasal verb. Uh, to set something up is to like um, to establish it or to put it together or to construct. 
Um, it just means to to build. Yeah, that's a hard one to explain. But basically, like um, you probably have seen this because I think in computers, when you're installing software, it's always telling you to do the setup, and you have to set up the software, or you have to set up the computer, or if you get new furniture, you have to set it up. So we use this phrasal verb a lot to talk about uh, building or constructing or creating something to set it up, right? So to put something together, um, which is another phrasal verb. So there you go. You got uh, two phrasal verbs for one. All right. And then this last headline here, Biden announces shakeup to convention as President Trump mulls moving speech to White House. So Announcing a shakeup, uh, we use this a lot, especially in politics when they're talking or in business as well. When businesses make a lot of changes or do something that maybe was unexpected, we usually call it a shakeup or they, they shake things up. They're shaking things up. They're making changes that maybe weren't expected or um, that took us by surprise, right? So we say uh, they're shaking things up. They're, they're just making changes basically but to shake is like shaking like a cocktail you know um, or to shake like the ground shakes in an earthquake you know um, and we say to shake up is like to mix up right so that's what to shake up is and then I want to point out this verb to mull mull something um, this is kind of a weird vo verb I, d I don't even really like I uh, know how we use it well, I, I know how we use it, but it's it's just kind of weird. Um, so we'll say a lot to mull something over, and that's like to contemplate a decision, right? You're mulling it over. So we'll say, I, let me mull that over a little bit. Um, somebody might invite me out to dinner tonight, and I don't know, maybe I'm tired and just want to go home and rest. I say, I, I think I'll mull it over and let you know in a couple hours. It's like I'm contemplating the decision. Here they just say mull's moving speech, so um, that's probably just to save space. Usually I hear that as mulling something over, but um, it stands by itself as a verb as well, as you can see here. Uh, he's contemplating the decision of moving the speech to the White House, uh, but... Typically, that is a phrasal verb as well, to mull something over. All right, that's today's lesson of learning English with the news. Hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Keep studying and keep learning.